Remember this portion of God's story as it is written in the book we love, Psalm 116. I love you, Yahweh. You have heard my cry for mercy. You have listened to me. I will call you on all my days. The bands of death encircle me. The messengers of Sheol ambush me. I was overcome with trouble and sorrow. Then I called your name, Yahweh. Help, Yahweh, save me. You are gracious, Yahweh, and just. Yahweh is compassionate. You protect those without guile. When I was brought low, you saved me. Be at rest once again, my soul, for Yahweh has been good to you. You have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears and my feet from banishment. I walk before you, Yahweh, in the land of the living. I believe even when I say I am completely crushed and in despair, said no one can be trusted. How can I repay you, Yahweh, for your goodness to me? I raise a cup of deliverance and call on the name of Yahweh. I will fulfill my vows to you in the presence of all your people. In the depths of your faithful is in the deep death, your faithful is precious in your sight, Yahweh. I am your faithful one. I am faithful to you alone, the child of your fidelity. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you the sacrifice of praise and call on the name of Yahweh. I will fulfill my vow to you in the presence of your people, in the courts, in the house of Yahweh, in the midst of Jerusalem. Alleluia. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Spoiler alert uh, for our sermon today it's a poem. Our scripture is a poem. I'm going to share a poem. Our entire life is made up of poems, poems of hope, of love, of anguish, of sorrow, and of mercy. So if you tune out now, just know our emotions connect us to our bodies and our bodies to each other and each other to the world, but I hope you will go on this journey with me. Many of you tell me after I preach how much you loved it and that I made you cry, and today will be no different. So get your tissues ready, because this one will be fun. You may be wondering, who am I to say that? Well, I work here at Allendale, so that gives me uh, authority, but I am also a poet. Um, some of you might be learning this for the first time. Sometimes I forget that I'm a poet and I feel weird saying it, but it's true. I am a writer. I write from my experience and I pull from my emotions because my emotions shape the way I interact with the world around me, from the way that I dress to the way that I write. When I write, I don't sugarcoat my emotions. Um, but if you know me, you also know that I love to laugh and I make jokes. So a lot of my poems are very funny because I am hilarious. <laughs> but also because it's healing for me. It's healing for me to combine my hardships with my imagination to imagine this big, scary thing and then make fun of it. It doesn't lessen my hurt in any way, but it helps me process. Writing helps me understand what's going on in my brain, and it shows how grief and sorrow can be com combined with love and hope. I live within both and, and I write within both and. Writing has taught me to be kind to my pain and to sow love to my sorrow. It has helped me feel at home in my own body and with my own emotions. And it's important for me to ex express the complexity of writing with your emotions because that's how I came to this scripture. I came to this scripture way differently than most theologian would. I came to this scripture as a poet. A poet that knows the power of words and knows symbols and metaphors are used when you can't use words. The writer of this psalm is a poet. I believe to better understand the complexities of their own emotions, they went to pen and paper. Well, 
in their time more commonly called ink and papyrus, and wrote the psalm that we read this morning. Many theologians will read this psalm and preach a psalm of praise, a psalm of thanksgiving ending in alleluia. The psalmist praises the creator and expresses gratitude for God's love and God's mercy. And this is a beautiful poem of hope and how the psalmist has been set free with God and how they owe so much to God that this is a psalm of humility and adoration. But, but I read it so much differently. Now don't get me wrong, all of that is true. I see all of that in this scripture. And if that's how you choose to read it, that's okay. But I think we are doing a disservice to our psalmist by saying that's all this psalm is. By writing off some of these lines as euphemisms or metaphors, you completely miss the real valid feelings the psalmist experiences. There are lines of deep sorrow in this poem. These lines were not added to just add a little bit of spice to praise. It is an expression of pain. And our poet does not turn away from that hardship because there is hope but there is also pain, and those two things go hand in hand. The psalmist wrote, the bands of death encircle me. The messengers of Sheol ambush me. I was overcome with trouble and sorrow. You rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from banishment. I am completely crushed. No one can be trusted. Those are not just metaphors, people. Those are valid, real emotions. And in the face of death, our psalmist wrote. The line that I didn't understand and I had to look up was the messengers of Sheol ambush me. For those not well versed in ancient literature like I am not, the word Sheol is a place. It's a place of still darkness. Specifically, it's a place after death, a place of anguish, of pain, of suffering. The writer was ambushed by this darkness with no consent. They were taken to a place of suffering. Reading this in today's context, to me, it sounds a lot like depression. I'm not trying to say, but. This psalmist was living a very complex life. And in their deepest pain, they turned to God. And God showed them compassion. God provided a place of rest. God freed them from their chains. God provided hope in the hardships of their life. So yes, the theologians are right. It's a psalm of praise, but it's also a psalm of lament. It's a psalm about life and death. It's sorrow and hope. It is both and. A friend of mine always says that life is a tragic sitcom. And this psalm shows that. It shows tragedy and beauty. And I cannot stand up here this morning and preach about hope when reading this scripture. Hope and sorrow are two sides of the same coin. And there is no way for me to ignore the pain the psalmist wrote or ignore the pain that we see in our world today. God can still be good and you feel bad. God can hear your cries and you feel alone in your tears. You can believe in the resurrection and still feel grief on Good Friday. You can believe in a God of liberation and still live in a state like Florida under a governor who chooses to do harm, who chooses to silence those that oppose him by passing laws, a governor that targets our trans siblings, takes away the rights of our own bodies, censors libraries and teachers, strips our queer siblings of their rights, further marginalizing our black and brown siblings by continuing to hold up white supremacy for his own well-being and take away our drag queens. We live under a governor who has created a state of sorrow. 
And if you are struggling to see a God of love in the depths of DeSantis rule and the GOP continuing to do so much harm, you are not alone. I feel it. The people in this room feel it. Our country feels it. We can feel both hope and sorrow. Sometimes you may feel one more than the other. Sometimes you may feel just sorrow and believe that there is no hope. But I promise you, hope and sorrow are always together. They are a cycle. Many of you may not know this, but I read tarot. It's a very important meditative and spiritual practice of mine. And while reading this scripture and meditating on my sermon, I thought about the card that I pulled for many months. This card. It's the death card, number 13. For six months, any time that I did tarot, this card would pop out at me. And honestly, that was a very difficult time for me. I was grieving the loss of someone that meant so much to me while I was preparing to buy a house and start a new life with someone I love so dearly. And it was weird to have so much hope and so much sorrow at the same time. Many people fear this card in the tarot deck, thinking it means an actual physical death. But that's not true. You see, this card describes death as a cycle a place for things to end so something new can begin. So as I was trying to figure out how to end this sermon, I spoiled it at the beginning. I decided to write a poem, a poem about hope and sorrow. My version of this psalm, a poem about this picture, this card, entitled Card 13. Within her arms, Death smiled at me and whispered, close your eyes, little one. There will come a time when you learn the path I pave through pain and pleasure is a misunderstood cycle. In the beginning, I struggled to accept who I was meant to be, death. In a mirror, I saw my bare bones as a curse. No eyes to look back at me, no hair to brush my cheek, no skin to feel warm. I was just a nightmare. I wanted to be loved, not feared. I denied my power. I refused to transform. I refused to grow. I refused to destroy. Until creation cried. Unaligned in their sorrow, creation taught me what I could not understand. Caution does not create safety. Contempt does not grow love. Control does not minimize pain. Through acceptance, I learned I am more than I ever expected to be. I am not just death, I am transformation. I bring life, I bring hope. You see, see, dear one, the sun must set for the moon to glow. The seeds must fall for the pollen to spread. The leaves must drop for the flowers to bloom. And you, you must let go of who you think you are to become who you were meant to be. Your life is not a journey, it's a revolution, a push and a pull of acceptance and change. I birthed order and chaos within you. I see beauty in your eyes while the pain is yet to come. I dream you will understand what I've created in you because I cannot deny myself anymore. In life and in death, I bring hope and sorrow. They are a part of me. In my womb, I birthed you, so now hope and sorrow grow within you. I've braided them into your fabrics of your swaddle, so they may comfort you to sleep. So good night, my love. I hope someday you learn my truth. Death leaves me in my cradle, sleeping peacefully, blissfully unaware of what she had shared until the days I experienced the deepest sorrow and the truest hope I learned death never left me. She has always watched over me, holding me, loving me, repairing me, challenging me, preparing me for who I was meant to be. Thank you.